Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 14 books that I read in the later half of October. I had a way better reading month than September. September I read almost nothing so I'm very happy with all the things that I've read this month. Some of them like weren't great like star rating wise but I read something like that's that, that's amazing for me. Obviously with it being October, I read a few like Halloween-y monster romances. So those will be talked about. And I did actually get on a like, kind of like contemporary romance kick. So let's get into these books. The book that I read after my mid-month wrap up is To Ravish a Rogue by Sam Nascosta. This is a really unique romance because it's a historical romance that also incorporates monsters or monsters kind of like normal in society. Um, so Charlotte is our heroine and she is a shapeshifter. She needs to get passage on a ship in order to reach her sister. Her sister's in trouble and needs her help. So she decides to stow away on a boat, not really knowing much about the boat, but decides to stow away as like a cabin boy. But the captain of the ship <laughs> knows exactly what this woman is doing right from the get-go. He can tell that that's not a boy, that is a woman under all those clothes. His name is Captain Lyrian and he is a pirate captain who's also part like serpent human creature so he can shift fully into like a sea serpent but he also has those serpent like qualities to him when he's in his human form. He obviously knows that Charlotte is not who she claims to be so he's gonna play a few tricks and see how far he can take her ruse till, till she finally bursts essentially and tells tells him what's going on. This is my first time reading a monster romance that takes place in a historical period and I definitely want to read more. Like I need more in this subgenre. I've even asked Siam Nascosta like will you be writing more of these and I really hope that she does. I think she said there might be might be something there. So I'm very excited. I want more authors to write monster romances in a historical setting because this was just so fun. I was completely gripped by it. I really love the monster aspects in here too because Lyrian and Charlotte, they are both creatures I've never read about before. And they were so cool. Like I've read a lot of monster romances and they were monsters I've never heard of before. And yeah, I, I love reading about new creatures, honestly. And I am very, very happy to announce that this is the first Sam Costa book that I actually really like. <laughs> Um, I unfortunately haven't really vibed well with the few monster romances that I've read by her. I think I've read now like five from her and this is the one that I definitely love. It's gotten over that three star rating for me, okay? It has. This one is a four star read for me. Um, and I'll also lift off, list off the tropes. So you have forced proximity, a hidden identity, monsters, pirates, and a shifter romance. Again, I gave this four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. The next seven books that I have to mention are a part of my novellathon reading vlog. I'll link that down below if you have not seen it. I go in depth on every single one of these seven books. They were read for the novellathon and we had a Halloween season um, for the novellathon and it was so much fun co-hosting with Tiff, Sam, and Rachel. I love all three of those ladies so stinking much. And yeah, I read these seven novellas. I'll quickly go over them, but if you wanna know my ratings and what I thought about them, I will link that vlog down below where you can know more of my thoughts. Or you can check out my Goodreads if you wanna read like my reviews. First one is A Bump in Boo Hill by Kimberly Lemming. This is a short little novella that takes place in her Mead Mishap series, which is her like fantasy romance series. It's absolutely hilarious. And you get to read about the heroine from book one, Cinnamon, and she's trying to find her mate and someone may or may not play trick on her. Like it's really cute, really sweet. Then I have The Aliens Escape by Ella Maven. This is the second book in her Drexonian Warrior series. This is basically an alien romance series where um, each hero is a part of this alien motorcycle club. It was fun, the hero and the heroine ends up getting kidnapped together and escape captivity. Next I have Raising the Monster's Child by May Kara. The heroine of the story is um, taking over her deceased great uncle's cabin in the middle of nowhere in the woods where she comes across this baby, this toddler that can shift into kind of like a rock form. Turns out he's an alien baby and he has a guardian of the same alien species as him, like watching over him. Um, but she doesn't know that, but she starts taking care of this baby when his guardian comes up and is like, oh, what are you doing? That's my charge. You should not be taking care of him. Um, and I'll leave it at that for you. <laughs> then I read Feral Song by TJ Klune. This is book number 3.5 in the Green Creek series. This is a short little novella that um, is a part of the Green Creek series that you read after Heart Song. And there's actually an audio version on TJ Klune's um, YouTube channel. Um, he has a podcast channel where the narrator who normally narrates like the books actually goes on his podcast and narrates 
the um, novella and it's really cool. I really enjoyed it. I think there's also one for Love Song, if I'm not mistaken. So if you have not read these novellas yet, you can go listen to them for free on YouTube. Like TJ Klune put them on YouTube himself. This is just a short little novella in that series about some characters we haven't really got the point of view from. Then I have Squeak by Vera Valentine. <laughs> um, we were on a live show for Novellathon and someone mentioned, I don't remember who, that Squeak actually has an audiobook. And I'm like, what the heck? So I go on my Libby during the live show and I immediately click like hold for it. It was two hours. Like I've heard nothing but hilarious things about this. This is a blue balloon shifter romance and it's MMF. Need I say more? <laughs> then I have Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole. This one has been on many TBRs and I finally got to it. I thought I couldn't get to it because I hadn't read book two in this main series because this is book number 2.6. Um, but I tried reading book two a few times. I'm just not vibing well with it. Um, but I've been really like wanting to read this. So I just didn't really care. I was like, I'm not really wanting to read book two. Let's just dive into this novella. And yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Our heroine is a wheelchair user and she's having a really hard time falling asleep. She has insomnia and she used to be able to fall asleep pretty quickly because this man's voice, our man's voice in here, um, was something she fell asleep to every night. Just like I fall asleep to ASMR, many other people fall asleep to ASMR. Like I understand that completely. So there's like his specific voice helped her fall asleep. Like that is so soothing and nice. But the channel where he would do puzzles, he would do puzzles on like a live stream and the live streams would stay up on his channel. The channel's gone now and all the live streams are gone. All the videos are gone and she's in a panic. So she actually sends him a email saying like, hey, I'll pay you if you could like voice record for me because I need sleep and he may or may not fulfill her request. And the last one that I read during the novellathon is Blast from the Past by Jessica Kane. This is a novella about our heroine who goes to like this wishing tree essentially on her family's like farm property and wishes for her soulmate. Then all of a sudden this guy with a thick country accent and claims to know nothing about the world current day plops right in front of her in the grass right in front of the tree um, and turns out he's a time traveler and they may or may not be soulmates. So yeah. I really enjoyed the novellathon. I had so much fun with my lovely co-hosts. So if you wanna know any of my thoughts about these books, when I rated them, be sure to watch my vlog down below. I got this book for my birthday this year and I just been dying to read it. I love this cover so much. Y'all know me, I love baking. So this is Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. I also listened to the audio version of this on Libby. So there is an audiobook if you are interested. The heroine of this story, her name is Jada, and she is very well known throughout America right now because she was on a dating show of sorts, kind of like The Bachelor, let's just say it's called The Bachelor. And she was the last woman standing, like The Bachelor was proposing to her and like chose her and she says no on national television completely breaks his heart. America's so pissed at her for breaking this guy's heart. When she gets off the show, she kind of like needs to lick her wounds. She can't get her trust fund from her grandmother until she has a steady job because she's quit quite a few jobs that don't really interest her anymore. So her grandmother actually sets Jada up with a job at a local bakery. Little does her grandmother know though that Jada already knows the bakery owner. His name is Donovan Dell and he is a famous football player, but when he's in his off season, he runs a bakery um, with a few of his teammates. But the shop isn't really doing well financial wise uh, recently and he really needs to figure out how to make more money for his business. But then things kind of pick up once Jada starts working at the bakery and people start recognizing her from this show. And it comes to a point where the two of them even fake date in order to maybe get more publicity for the cupcake shop and to get more customers in. And of course, with fake dating romances, the two of them actually fall in love with each other I really enjoy this. Definitely opposites attract romance. I, I I love both of these characters in different ways. I really adored the baking aspect. There's like a point in this book where he's trying to teach her how to bake cupcakes and it goes horribly wrong. She's like, I am not a baker. Like you need to understand this. Like this is showing you, I almost burnt down your kitchen. Like I'm not a baker. Put me at the front of the shop where I can sell them. Don't let me bake up. <laughs> I really really liked Jada in here when it came to her career and kind of feeling lost in it. She doesn't really know what she's passionate about. She doesn't really know what she wants to do. It's really hard. It's really hard to figure that out. So I really related to her. This book definitely gave me Take a Hint Danny Brown vibes. So if you really like that book, I recommend this one. This isn't a full five stars for me because personally I feel like the ending was very rushed. Like the ending like happened like that. Like I, I needed more from it, honestly. A memorable quote in this one says, you bring joy and love to my life. I love your supposed imperfections. I should have told you I believe in you and I want you to do the same. I should have told you that you have so much to offer the world. 
and I want a front row seat to how you continue to blossom. Representation in here for a black love romance and dyslexia representation. The heroine here has dyslexia. And personally, I really enjoy that representation. Tropes, you have baking, it's a uh, dating show is incorporated into this. Fake dating, it's a foodie romance, uh, the going viral trend online. And yes, I really enjoy this, gave this one four stars. I tried to pick another Halloween monster novella. So I picked up Ensnared by the Werewolf by Lillian Lark. My Libby had this available off of ebook. And it's a short book, a part of her Monstrous Matches series. I read quite a few books in this series. It's like a romance series about a matchmaker, like witch matching up monster creatures and humans most of the time, but sometimes they can both be paranormal creatures as well. This is just a very short, like it's very short novella about a witch and a werewolf finding out that they're fated mates. And that's all I really can tell you. There is like the primal, you know what, in here. So that was really fun. Um, so if you want like a werewolf shifted romance, I recommend this one if you want a short, quick read. It was fine. I ended up giving it like four stars. So yeah, for tropes in this one, uh, there's the chasing, fated mates, paranormal, rejected mates at first like at first um he rejects her but then you like figure out why when you read the book um it's a novella there are werewolves and witches next i read an arc for silent lies by neva altaj this is her latest book book number eight in her perfectly imperfect mafia romance series i got a little bit worried because i think the past two books by neva in this series i didn't like absolutely adore which i've adored quite a few of her books so um i was a little worried but man I'm back, I'm back with this one, okay? This one's about Sienna and Drago. They are from two mafia families, two different mafia families, but they get put in an arranged marriage together. Actually, Sienna's been tasked by the leader of her Costa Nostra family to um, spy on Drago and his family to like report back to him. So she's kind of there for alternate reasons, but he knows like right from the get-go that she's like scheming up something. So he doesn't really let her into a lot of things going on, but he gets a little bit upset when he actually starts falling for this woman who is a ray of sunshine. She is a total ray of sunshine. Um, and she wears like these quirky, cool outfits that I love. Like I would love to steal her wardrobe in here. Like her wardrobe means a lot to her. She wears a lot of fun, bright colors and sparkly things. Like I really love that aspect of the book and Sienna's character. I love seeing Sienna break apart Jago's walls and just have him be himself. Like he is fully himself once Sienna is in his life. And there's one scene in here I was a puddle on the floor for. Like he ends up painting her toes. Like she's struggling painting her toenails and he is there. He is there to do it for her. Yes, get me a man who like braids a woman's hair or paints her tone, like yes, give it to me now. Okay, representation for high frequency hearing loss. So Drago in this book, when he was younger, he and his family were in a house fire and um, he has high frequency hearing loss as a result from it. So he gets by with lip reading a lot, like he can't talk on the phone because he can't hear anybody on the phone. So. I thought that was a really good representation. I've never really seen that in a book before. Well, I have quite a few memorable quotes, but I'll try to pick one. If I catch any man touching you, even with just the tip of his finger, he'll lose much more than his hand. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, <laughs> trigger warnings. Mentions of immediate family member death, graphic de depictions of violence, torture, guns, and gore. Uh, tropes, arranged marriage, hard of hearing representation, Grumpy Sunshine, Mafia, there's no third act breakup. Um, there's the that's my wife line, okay. Um, opposite the tract, you have a possessive hero, a quirky heroine, there's disability representation, um, a scarred character, and definitely the touch her and die trope. I gave this one five out of five stars. Another short novella that I read for Halloween is uh, The Hunter by Jenica Snow. I read her Beauty and the Beast one, a part of this series um, like a year ago, and I really enjoyed this one. This one was fine i honestly don't remember a lot other than the fact that this is a little red riding hood retelling and it was just like just times of them being together over and over and over again and i was bored honestly <laughs> like i was bored i gave three stars it was completely fine like if you want like a captor captive um like primal red riding hood retelling with a lot of hot times like by all means, pick this one up. Next, I have Love Light Farms by BK Borson. I finally picked up this series. I know I picked up a Christmas romance in the middle of October or like the end of October, but like, I don't care. <laughs> I really wanted to read this. Like I've heard great things about BK Borson and her writing and um, the audiobook hold finally came through on Libby for me. So I was like, why the heck not? So Stella is our heroine and she's in a little bit of a pickle. 
okay? When she realizes she needs a fake boyfriend for a competition that she has entered herself and her Christmas tree farm in. She lied in her application saying that she owns this Christmas tree farm with her boyfriend when in fact she does not have a boyfriend whatsoever, but she got chosen to be a candidate for this contest and she's like, oh darn, now I have to actually have a boyfriend with me though because I lied on the application, like I need a boyfriend. And so she asked her best friend Luca to fill that role for her. And little does the other person know that they have been crushing hardcore on each other for years. There's like mutual pining, but they don't want to ruin each other's friendship. This was really cute. I love the Christmas vibes, but me in the total Christmas spirit for sure. And I was just really cozy reading this. The narrator I think did a great job. Like I wanted to just curl up with this book in my bed, drinking some hot chocolate. I wish it would snow outside, but I live in the middle of Texas. There's not gonna be no snow. I know this, I'm being delusional, but it's fine. And I just love friends to lovers romances. So I thought this was a good solid four star read for me. I just wasn't that big of a fan of the conflict and Stella's stubbornness for the conflict part in here. Just like not that big of a fan of. So a uh, tropes in this one, you have, it's a holiday romance, cinnamon roll hero. It's cozy for sure. Fake dating, friends to lovers, great banter, aunts, and it's a small town romance. I give this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I have to mention is A Nordic King by Karina Halley. This is actually a reread for me. I've been in the nanny romance mood. I decided to pick this one up because I remember it being one of my all time favorite nanny romances. I think when I first read this book back in 2019, I gave it a 5 star rating or close to that, maybe 4.5 stars. After reading this, it's not bad. I'm gonna give it four stars. Like I'm lowering my rating, which I understand why a lot of people don't reread their favorite romance books anymore. <laughs> because I feel like like once you read a favorite, it might not hold up to the standard you have in your head. And like I held this book up to such a high standard, being like, this is my favorite eating romance ever. Like I love it. Like I don't think this is my favorite nanny romance anymore. Like it's a it's a good solid book. Like, I don't really think it's my favorite. So also like written tastes grow and change throughout the years. I read this back in 2019. So, um, but this is a nanny romance, like I've said before, um, between the King of Denmark and the nanny to his two little girls. It's a fun, wild time. I really enjoyed the two little girls in here. I thought they were great. I love that part of the story. And um, yeah, there is an age gap between the two of them also. Um, so yeah, and one thing I will mention that kind of bugs me with this book and the audiobook specifically, so the heroine is Australian. Like she has an Australian accent. She speaks Australian, like she has Australian, like she speaks in Australian phrases also, like things that only people from Australia would normally say, right? Why is the narrator having an American accent? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like she would say, oh crikey. Like she would say it like, <laughs> like a normal like American like like accent I'm like why can't y'all hire somebody with an Australian accent I don't understand anyway that was something that I was like nitpicky about but anyway this book is a good book I think it's a solid read I personally just didn't really see the love between these two beyond the physical if I'm not, like I honestly didn't really see it beyond the physical like at first like the hero doesn't want to hire the heroine because she's too attractive and all this stuff and they end up getting together because they think the other person's so hot. I didn't really feel like see them like fall in love, really, you know? Anyway, <laughs> I may just be like really nitpicky, but that's what I get from rereading a favorite of mine. But it is four stars, like it's a solid read, but it's not what I had up in my brain, if that makes sense. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I read or reread in the month of October, the later half of October. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things that you can leave me, what emoji are we gonna do? Let's do, um, sorry. Let's do a Christmas emoji, any Christmas emoji, cause I want it to be Christmas, okay? <laughs> I know it's November. We have to give November its moment, okay? But I want it to be Christmas, okay? Anyways, uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.